What does an intergenerational co-leadership approach for peace and security mean? Well, let me tell you something. I started working for promoting peace when I was 19 years old. This was almost 10 years ago. Oh la la. <laughs> That's a long time ago. But when I first started, I would say I had the privilege and the opportunity to actually be part of two movements. I was part of the youth movement and I was part of the women's movement. And I remember one time I was attending a meeting with a youth group and I was telling a friend of mine who was actually my age at the time that you know after this meeting you should come with me to the women's meeting because we're pretty much discussing the exact same thing. At the time, we were talking about uh, political participation. We were talking about important issues happening in Libya, such as dismantling of armed groups. And I was telling her, you know, you should really come with me to the women's movement meeting. And I remember her saying, well, to be completely honest, I don't want to associate myself with the women's movement because I don't I don't feel like I relate to them and I must say I I sort of struggled to understand what she actually means because there she was a young person a young woman and I thought you know since she's wearing the two hats she should fit in everywhere and when I started discussing with her like why you don't want to associate yourself with the women's movement I remember her saying mm, well, you know, they, they sort of don't look like us. They don't look like me and you. And clearly, in a way or another, she was referring to the generational gap between, you know, the youth movement or women in the youth movement and women in the women's movement. And ever since, I started thinking that, well, it is a little bit true that the women's movement, for example, when it comes to the WPS movement, the movement for women, peace and security, um, you can clearly see that there is a generational gap and a generational divide across different generations. And it's just important to say at this point, this is no one's fault. It's no one to blame for this. It's just important to recognize it and address it because it sort of feels that this generational divide in the women, peace and security movement, just as an example, is more or less an elephant in the room. It's actually quite a huge elephant in the room that not many people want to address. And sometimes those who address it, address it in a defense offense way. And I think that might not really be um, a constructive approach to go about it. And that's why with my organization that together we build it i'm i'm very much aware and i'm always advocating within the organization but also outside the organization within for an example our my work for peace and security is for everyone to adopt an intergenerational co-leadership approach to peace and security and what does that mean that means that people across different ages, people from different generations must come together and work together, whether in one organization or in different organizations, whether in one movement or in different movements. The most important thing is that when it comes to leadership, there shouldn't be one generation that is leading or several generations that is leading. It should be a co-leadership approach, meaning that women across all generations living at this present moment should actually have the opportunity to not only participate in the movement but also to be part of the leadership of this movement and this is what an intergenerational co-leadership approach means.